Uh, and now we have our final presenter, Mark Slutsky. He, he is uh, the curator of Sad YouTube, and he's going to tell you about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Uh, I just need to do some technical things for a second here. And I think I'm supposed to say when I'm plugging my iPhone in so that it doesn't pop. OK, good. OK, um, if there's consensus about anything on the internet, uh, it is that there is a worse place on the internet. And that worse place is the YouTube comment section. Um, it's been called, uh, comments have been called the radioactive waste of the web. Uh, they make me lose whatever limited faith I have left in humanity. Um, they are the imperial idiot guard, uh, the elite imperial guard of idiot, internet idiocy. Um, John Herman uh, once polled uh, the, worst, the worst comment sections on the web, and he said, uh, YouTube wins. Nobody in the history of the world ever said, I go to YouTube for the comments, right? <laughs> Wrong. I go to YouTube for the comments. Because what I've discovered in the last year half or so is that the YouTube comment section is kind of the greatest place on the internet. It's kind of the most uh, wonderfully humid, heartbreaking, uh, and tragic. Uh, I found stories, no seriously, I found stories in the YouTube comment section uh, that equal in emotional weight um, anything else I've read online and, and possibly anywhere else. Um, I'm going to show you some of these things. Uh, I, I first sort of got turned on to the strange treasures of the YouTube comment section when I was at a James Blunt video. I don't know why I was there. I swear, I have no idea why I was there. Um, but I found a comment there. R.I.P. Harris. We only knew each other for like two months. But you were the sickest guy I've met in a while. We weren't lovers, but now you're six feet under and I missed your funeral. Sorry, bud. I'll dedicate some of this life out to you. Truth is, I feel so helpless just waiting to die. I wish there was something I could do to change my life. This was not what I was used to reading um, in a YouTube comment section. I was used to uh, uh, you know, uh, cr crazy arguments, uh, incredible stupidity, hair curling, racism. Uh, but it seemed to me that maybe there were more comments out there like that, more uh, emotional, uh, personal things that might get lost under the tidal wave of terrible comments that are posted every day. Um, so I decided to go looking for them, and I started my blog, Sad YouTube. And uh, with, the, with the idea that I would find these in, this, in the deluge of YouTube comment uh, terribleness and rescue them and sort of uh, find a home for them. Um, some of my favorites uh, told stories inspired by hearing old songs that were just moments from people's lives that were, you know, uh, maybe not like the biggest, most significant moments, but that, that were sort of a special thing that would have been lost forever if that person hadn't written it down. I'll give you an example. I would like to send you a memory. I was 13, walked to the projects across the street in Manhattan. The song was played from an apartment on the eighth floor so loudly and clearly. I grabbed a kid and danced the hustle with her for maybe an hour. It felt so great to be alive and feel free to dance in the streets, parks, or a cafeteria during lunch. The boom boxes played this on the subway platform. We broke out dancing the hustle waiting for the train. The hustle was sexy and graceful. Never got tired. I love how it goes from that one specific moment of dancing with that girl across the street to sort of zoom out to this wider sense of what it was like to be alive when this song was playing and when it was playing everywhere on the streets, in the, in the subway cars. Um, and I don't think really anything else gives you that sense. Um, there's also this one. This song reminds me of when I was a teenager and myself and two friends would wait near the train station for my friend's sister to come home after working in Manhattan. One friend has since passed away. 
what I wouldn't give for one more night like that. You don't realize how special even little things like that mean. And to me, there was something profound about that, that idea that it wasn't necessarily like the bar mitzvahs or like the weddings or the like uh, the huge moments in your life uh, that you tend to look back on. You look back on these boring, mundane moments, um, waiting for your friend's sister to come home from work. Um, and yet those are the moments you sort of most associate with um, being alive or with being, or with being young or just life being okay and good. Um, and sometimes it takes hearing a song like that to feel that way again. Um, sometimes I would come across comments that felt like they were pulled from some larger Studs Terkel style oral history of uh, American society the last hundred years. Particularly songs that were popular uh, around the Vietnam era. High school. After lunch, some of the girls would dance when on the gym floor before classes. Beth, Joellen, Nina, to name a few. This song had come out, and they just danced to it. I remember sitting and waiting for my favorite girl to come out. When she did, my heartbeat sped up till I thought I would pass out. She knew I was there. I heard it at Travis Air Force Base before going to Nam. I just cried while waiting to board the plane. I mean, you never would hear that story, uh, you never read it in so, any sort of official uh, account of the Vietnam War, but it, it really tells you something about what it must have been like and, and the shock of what it was like to be alive at that time. And I actually think there's a really beautiful cinematic uh, quality to the way it jumps from him and Jim watching these girls, and all of a sudden he's like in an Air Force base about to go to Vietnam, and he hears the song again, and in this memory he's remembering this more innocent time. So it, it's got this sort of layered uh, quality to it that I think is uh, a pretty sophisticated emotion for a YouTube comment. <laughs> um, and speaking of which, this, this next story is one that has, has truly haunted me since I first read it. And I think about this story almost every day. Um, it, it, it blows my mind. I'm just going to read it for you. I was the only witness to a horrific car crash in 62. Two young guys drag racing in the city. Telstar, this song, was playing on one of the car radios when I walked up to it. I felt like those who died were being carried to heaven on the sound waves of this song. I was 12 years old at the time. I actually felt the touch of death itself, but also the afterlife as well. Something there. I still get that same feeling of ascension, chills, and shivers every time I hear this song. And then some other people sort of asked him some questions and he responded later in another comment. Yes, 100% true. Dark October night, two guys in cars, two older guys walking across a dimly, dimly lit corner. I was a half a block away. I heard cars a few seconds before the crash. Each car hit a pedestrian. One car veered, hit a small tree, ended up pointing up into a totally black sky. Headlights shining into nothingness. Men from the tavern on the corner came running out with pool sticks in hand. The sound of the crash and radio was shattering. The only one who lived vanished into the night like the light. Maybe death isn't as grisly as we perceive it to be. At least that's what I focused on all these years since. I carry the first-hand experience of it as a reassurance of life after death. It helped years later in Vietnam. I do thank you for your compassion and concerns not just yours, but all those who commented. I think about that story almost every day. Um, the imagery is uh, its almost overwhelming. And, and I ended up uh, finding Mike Menon, the guy who left this comment. Um, I, I, I searched for him, and I looked him up, and we, and we found him. Um, and he told me the story that had happened to him more than 50 years ago, and that he still carries around with him. And uh, he told to me in a lot more detail. Uh, and I ended up looking up the uh, intersection in the Iowa town where it took place. I found the tavern on Google Maps. Everything he told me, uh, nothing he said gave me any, any reason to believe that he was telling anything but the truth. Um, and, uh, and if you'd like to know more, <laughs> uh, I wrote a whole story about it and about Sad YouTube, which just appeared in BuzzFeed today, so that's my plug uh, for that. <laughs> you will learn more about this and the other commenters that I found. Um, it's interesting to me to see how people use YouTube. Um, uh, some people, there are some comments that had an almost mystical feeling to them. 
uh, like people were using them to bring back uh, the ghost of, of times and people past. Uh, certain comments felt almost like a seance. We used to have so much fun off this song back in the day. I remember going to a club in New York back then and I was so nervous. And when this song came on, I forgot where I was and let go. And it's been on ever since then. I may be 49, but when I hear music from my era, I feel energized all over again. Thanks to the person who took the time to post these songs. I can actually see in my head friends who are dead and gone. I can see them dancing till the sweat was dripping off them. My parents are staying with us this week. Mom walked into my study when I started playing this. She just stood there with her eyes closed and tears running down her face. She hasn't heard this song since she and my dad were dancing at the Saint, a mostly gay club in Manhattan in the 80s. For a moment she was back there with so many friends who died in the epidemic not long after. For a minute, it's like I was actually there and they were all still alive. Thanks for posting this. Uh, it's interesting reading some uh, YouTube comments and seeing people almost uh, emotionally react to the song they're hearing. Uh, it's, it's like they're almost watching it in real time. Um, let me show you this one. Hey! I have an ex-girlfriend from England who is half Jamaican and British and fine as fuck. Anyway, this song would make her go crazy. Very sexy girl. And I regret not staying with her. I love how it goes from this like erotic reverie to this expression of true um, uh, remorse and loss in like two sentences. And and the capital uh, capital R is like particularly exquisite. <laughs> um, not all these song, not all these memories come from songs, or not all, sorry, not all these memories are decades old. They're not all from the 60s or 70s or 80s. Some of them are from more, more recent, and yet, to me, they're just as uh, weirdly mystically, <laughs> mystical feeling, uh, despite their uh, recency, if that is a word. Um, I miss watching this with my fourth grade class, singing along. The song reminds me of Jason Sakasum his favorite schoolhouse rock song. I'm currently in sixth grade, and I still struggle with my multiplication. These songs bring back memories from not so long ago. Everything about this uh, comment reminds me of uh, an Emily Dickinson poem, basically. It's as good as any Emily Dickinson poem I've ever read. Uh, and I think there's a real profundity to that idea that even though these memories were from not so long ago, <laughs> they're still memories that are lost forever uh, and that can only be reclaimed by listening to the song. Um, and one thing I never do when I uh, copy and paste these to my blog is change anything about the spelling, about the grammar. Uh, to me, that's an essential part of the, the comment's texture and their voice, and I think I would be losing a lot um, by fixing it. Um, I'll show you an example. This is one of my grandma's favorite songs. She would play her oldies and the song would come on. And she'd be baking her pies and cakes and cooking for the holidays. And she would sing every word to the song. I love this song as well. And it reminds me of her so much I want to cry. This was the first song I played when I found out she passed away. I think it would be a betrayal of the uh, author of this comment to change the way it was set or to to to, to Decapitalize all the capitalize, which I which I love. To me, that is the voice of this comment, um, and I think that even despite uh, whatever grammatical syntactic errors I find in these comments, they're still very powerfully written. Uh, some of them are, are uh, really beautifully structured. They often build to a, a real emotional crescendo, um, or, or or end with this sort of like uh, knife in the gut twist ending. Um, I'll play this one. I love this song. It is one of my favorite songs. 
I remember when we used to roller skate to 45s at Bushkill Park outside of Easton, PA. This is one I used to fly around the rink to. That was when I was younger, and my leg was not messed up. Or this one, which is interesting to me for a few reasons. Last year of high school for me, 1967. My best friend and his girlfriend who we were both in love with, though he never knew. Haven't seen her in 35 plus years. You always remember the ones who got away. Never told anybody their song. I mean, the last, those last two words are a punch in the gut. And I, I, I honestly don't think the author of this comment uh, came to YouTube intending to tell this heartbreaking story. Um, I have a couple, there's a couple reasons why I, I don't think that. One is I've talked to other commenters. And I think what happened is, uh, like them, I think he came to dick around on YouTube, listen to some old songs, uh, click on ones in the suggested videos list. Um, and then all of a sudden a song showed up, uh, and he heard it, and, and it, it was sort of an emotional ambush. Uh, he, uh, a memory or uh, a, a memory or a story or emotion just sort of came flooding back. And what to do with it? Um, but to, to communicate it somewhere. And, and below each video, there is that confession booth, which is the YouTube comment box. And it just sort of went in there. Um, uh, a place where th that is the most public, and, and, but also weirdly the most private place in the world. No one you knows. No one you know reads YouTube comments or would be likely to come across your own YouTube comments. The other way I know this guy didn't go to YouTube uh, in order to share this heartbreaking story is his username. <laughs> Wanker4761. <laughs> but, you see, I think the YouTube comment section is this really interesting machine uh, for capturing memories and capturing these stories. And I, I don't think you could have designed it this way. I think it's an accidental machine. I think if you created a website called like coolsongstories.com, you would get people coming to tell stories, but you get people coming who uh, were used to telling their stories, uh, were maybe memoirists, people who you know, told their own stories a lot. Uh, but not everyone knows that they have a story to tell. And I think people go to YouTube and they hear these songs and uh, they realize that they have a story, one that they didn't sort of even know beforehand. Um, and that's why you know, uh, the, the really easy commenting system allows them to share it, because they, they need to communicate with someone. Uh, they need to communicate with someone who maybe isn't you know, a Facebook friend of theirs, who doesn't know them personally. This guy talking about the woman he's still in love with, he probably wouldn't want to like, put this somewhere where his wife could read it or his kids could read it. Um, but you know, these comments are, uh, as beautiful as they are to me, they're, they're very ephemeral for a couple of reasons. And one of them is uh, they can, any comment can disappear any day. Uh, any video can be deleted by its owner. Um, uh, most of these songs are sort of bootleg, like on un un uh, official uploads of songs and copyright owners can come and yank them at any, at any point. And I'm pretty sure those comments just disappear. Um, but and, and, you know, I went back and looked and uh, to, to get screen caps for this uh, presentation and a good chunk of them were gone. Um, ones that I had found just months earlier uh, had already disappeared. Uh, but I think more perniciously, uh, is that uh, Google and YouTube have been trying to sort of encourage people, they're trying to clean up the comment section. And so the first thing they did was for about a year they uh, tried to badger you into using your real name. And I don't think Wanker4761 would have, would have written this story if he had to use his real name. And more recently they've been trying to bug you into using your Google Plus accounts. And again, Google Plus is like Facebook. You've got your friends, you've got your coworkers on there. And it's not a place, you just share different things on Facebook. Uh, you're more aware that you're being watched. Um, and I, I think this is going to sort of damage the delicate ecosystem of YouTube comments that I like so much. <laughs> um, and I think the reason why this is happening is because Google and YouTube, they, they you know, quite rightly see uh, uh, the YouTube comment section as the garbage heap of the internet, the trash of the internet. But when an archaeologist wants to find out how a civilization lived, what day-to-day -day life was for the people who lived there, what do they do? They go through the trash. Thank you very much. All right, that's IRL Club number two. Thanks a lot.